Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And today we're going to be talking about diatoms. This is designed by Sabrina Kaliba, and this is published, going to be published by Ludo Lima. So this is basically a game all about these things called diatoms. I had never heard of these before, but basically either. these are these different kinds of microscopic algae that when they arrange, they arrange themselves in these kind of gorgeous mosaic tile-like structures. Uh, in the Victorian era, they apparently were used as like weird like microscopic artwork. You were trying to arrange these in a certain way. And these, these, they'd go on a microscope, microscope slide that was like the size of a period. That's how big this whole thing was, the size of a period. And so you'd have your friends over in the Victorian era, and you'd say things like persnickety, <laughs> and you would look through this microscope, and you would see these incredible designs by these crazy algae, these microscopic algae. So, uh, yeah, we love unique themes in our household. Uh, we gravitate towards unique themes. And I gotta say... This is That's probably unique. the most unique theme we've ever seen. Algae. Algae. No, decorative algae. <laughs> right. All right, you guys, let me give you a quick overview of how to play. All right, here is our setup for diatoms. Every player is going to have their own uh, board here, which is basically a microscopic slide board. Then we, across the top over here, we have all of our five different types of diatoms that we're replacing on our board. Over here, we have kind of a little mini game, which is a tile laying game where we're going to be playing two draft our different diatoms that we're replacing on our board. So how that works is basically, um, we're gonna be placing tiles, it's gonna be making these kind of pie slices, and based off whatever the size of the pie slice, whatever kind of percentage of that is various colors, you're gonna be drafting different shapes. So the way that works is, you're going to draw a tile from the top of the stacks over here. You already have two down below. So basically you're gonna choose out of the three that you now have in order to place one into the middle. You have to match all the sides up, and then once you've done that, you're gonna use your little uh, little know, magnifying glass here, put it over the intersection of those spots, and you're gonna see what fractions you've got there. So basically with this particular scenario, we've got a one-third section of green, and we've got a two-thirds section of yellow. Going to our chart, that means that we are going to basically grab a green oval, and then we are going to grab a yellow square from our supply. Now we can put those diatoms on our board anywhere we want. However, each spot can only hold one or two different shapes. So for instance, over here, this can hold either an oval or a circle. This one can hold either a, a square or a triangle. So each one of those can only hold certain things. Now, why would you want to place them in certain places? Well, because what we're doing is we're entering into a contest and we are trying to score the most amount of points in that contest. In order to do that, we're going to have to impress some judges. So in the base version of the game, we've got three judges we're trying to impress. This first one here talks about symmetric pairs on lines. So for instance, if we had across the same line there, uh, two things on opposite sides that are the exact same, in this case, a blue star or a blue star, that's going to be worth 15 points. But if you have either the same color or the same shape, but they are not the same color or shape. So for instance, over here we have a purple square and a purple uh, triangle on the same row. It's worth five points. Or we've got a triangle and a triangle, but they're different colors, also along that same line in the exact same spot symmetrically. That's gonna be worth five points. So trying to get those pairs set up as best you can. It's gonna give you a lot of points. Over here we have matching colors anywhere on the board. So for instance, uh, the more yellows we have, the more points we're gonna get. If we have, let's say, a whole whole bunch of blues, like in this scenario, you're gonna get 40 points if you have eight or more uh, blues on the board. So for each color, you're gonna score them and try to get as many points as possible. All right, and then we have different shaped rings, or different shapes in rings. There's three rings, a center, a middle, and an outer ring. And if you can get different shapes in those rings, the more points you're going to get. So there's five different shapes, as we saw over here across the top. If we can get all five of them on one of those rings, it's going to be worth 40 points. Or if you can only get two of them, it's going to be worth five points. So you can see those are kind of all the different scoring parameters that you have in the base game. Once you're more familiar with the game, you're going to be able to add in all these guest judges. You're going to choose one of these per game, and basically, even within those, there's going to be two different sides. So, for instance, over here, we have our guest judge. This is the color connector. If you were able to get 10 points for each diatom in the largest connected group of the same color diatoms. So, in this case, we've got five pinks all connected. That's going to be worth 50 points at the end of the game, which is fantastic. However, then you can also flip it over, and you can play the persnickety mood mode instead. In this case, the same exact thing is going to get scored. Whoever has the biggest section is going to get 100 points. Whoever has the second biggest is going to get 70 points. However, there's also a drawback. There's a negative scoring parameter over here. This particular one says negative 5 points for each 
placed diatom not connected to at least one other diatom of the same color. So this blue one's kind of hanging out over here without any blue buddies. That's going to give you negative five points each time that happens if you're using this persnickety mood of this particular judge. But the first time you're playing, I would recommend just using the three base judges. Let's go ahead and place our pieces for now. Let's see if we can place our oval here. Let's place our square over here. And later on, we'll try to grab some more things that make those score based off our base judges. You can also have a scenario where you place multiple things in such a way that it's going to score in multiple ways. So let's create one of those scenarios here. Um, boy, I'm struggling. By the way, there are gaps, those blank spots. Those can be any color. However, they don't give you any points. If you were to place a part, a tile like this, and you place it right there, you'd be able to score it in multiple places. Here, here, and here. Making a placement like that that allows you to have multiple you know, places where three tiles connect is going to give you a lot of die times to place, which is going to really help out your scoring parameters. The game is going to end once all the tiles have been placed. At that point, your mosaics are complete. You're going to go to the judges, and you're going to get scoring based off each one of the judges. There is a little score chart that kind of allows you to break down each one of those parameters and kind of adds up the total all together. At that point, you're going to add up all of your points, and whoever has the most points wins the game. So this is just a prototype, but I want to point out that all of the, on your board, your own player board, only two different shapes can fit in there. And the thing that works really nicely is like literally only two different shapes can fit in there. Even if you want to fit a different shape, it won't fit. And so when you first look at the board, it does look kind of busy at first, but once you figure that out and you understand what's happening, it's not as busy. And it's nice that you can't accidentally put the wrong shape in the wrong thing or do something like that because literally the cutout only fits the one of two shapes that you want to put in, and I just really liked that. I liked the drafting in this game of your different tiles. You basically have this kind of mini game happening over here where you, have, you draw a tile, then you have three to choose from, you place one of them, and wherever you place it, however you line that up, that tells you what tiles that you get to draw yeah. to actually place on your board. So it's like a little mini drafting game to tell you what to draft in order to place on your actual board, how you're going to actually score. I thought that was a really unique cool way to to get your stuff speaking of that they have this magnifying in the glass and they say you can use it when you place your tile to place it over to figure out what your um what uh your percentage of everything is to figure out what you're drafting what pieces you're drafting and at first you think i'm smart i can do this i i can i can see it but once it starts growing and everything is like all together to blends together it's actually super helpful that magnifying glass it helps you not get frustrated and it helps the game progress and it helps you not feel like an idiot so it's a really simple thing that you didn't like have to put in there but it it helped a lot at least for me uh the kind of the overall theme of this is that you are all making these things and they're getting judged right yeah. so that's how the scoring works there's three base judges that are going to be uh compliment you know talking about your your thing that you've made, your design that you've made, and they're going to score you on different parameters, and that happens in every game. However, once you're more familiar with the game, you can add in these guest judges. You add in one guest judge per game, and uh, it's going to score on a variety of different ways. Each one's different. On top of that, there's two different versions of them. There is the easygoing version of the card, and then there's the persnickety version of the card. Persnickety. And they're, they're related, obviously, the top and the bottom are related. One is going to reward you for however many times you were able to do a certain thing, whatever the case is, how, arrange this in some certain way. But then on the persnickety side, it's going to start by giving you a whole bunch of points for being the best, second best, third best at any given category. But then it's going to take away points also from some other category. So, oh, so persnickety. Except for snickety. <laughs> uh, so having those extra scoring judges, those uh, those guest judges, in addition to the three base judges, gave you the opportunity to have a wide variety of gameplay. Every time you play this game, you're going to be trying different things. You're going to be attempting different shapes, different patterns. Always kind of going back to the core rules, the core base judges, um, but trying to focus on whatever the new uh, guest judge was that you had brought on this particular turn or this game. So we are currently rewatching Bones um, because we don't like new things, I guess. But yeah. anyway, so. Isn't that how it is? Like, how often are we just going to keep on watching The Office? It's just, it's just forever. It's just what, it, what it is. <laughs> so we're watching Bones, and the, in the first season, there's this episode where they're all trapped there because some virus was released and they may, need to make sure they don't get it, but they're getting Christmas presents for each other and one of the characters is going to blow up an in image of some like I don't remember if it was algae but it was something and I was like oh my gosh we just played this 
game. Yeah. We literally just played it. And so it was so fun for me to be able to, you know, we were playing this game a few times and then we were watching that and I was able to connect my gameplay to what something that's real in the world. And I just thought that that was so cool that because of the game, when he mentioned that, I knew what he was talking about because of the game. And I was like, that is so cool. So I really loved that that um, kind of just taught me something. It's something that I didn't know, or maybe if I did know, I forgot about it. But I just, I really enjoyed that. So this is the winner of the 2023 Cardboard Edison Award, and after playing it, it is uh, it absolutely makes it makes sense of why it won. <laughs> yeah. This is an uh, incredibly clever uh, game. Uh, it makes you feel clever playing it. The way you draft, the way you place things, all of that matters. The way you score, because you're, you're going to get points, you're going to feel good about it no matter what you do. But it's incredibly clever. It's got a bizarrely an interesting, unique theme. Uh, man, this is going to be a ton of fun. Um, so yeah, keep your eye out for this. This is coming to crowdfunding soon. Um, so yeah, die toms. Everything we talked about, this is a prototype copy, so everything is subject to change from a component standpoint. Um, but as far as that goes, keep your eye out for it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Everybody, thank you so much for watching it. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. You guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this game was provided to us by a publisher for in exchange for a fair and honest review. And if you want to see more stuff, check out over here to see something we think you might like. And over here, we think uh, that YouTube has picked out a great video for you. You're going to love Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.